Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the VM Blog Expert Interview Series. And today we're being joined by Colton Andrus, the CEO and founder of Gremlin. Colton, welcome to the show. Thank you very much for having me, David. Pleasure to be here. Yeah, I'm looking forward to our conversation. So before we get started, uh, maybe if you wouldn't mind, just give viewers uh, a quick overview of Gremlin. Sure, sure. Uh, so Gremlin is a product that is built to help customers build reliable systems. Uh, it's really the genesis came out of some work I had the privilege of being part of at Amazon and Netflix, uh, which was really the nascent days of chaos engineering. And we went out and built, you know, the best chaos engineering platform, something that was safe, something that was secure, something that was scalable. And over the last few years, we've really expanded upon that. We found, hey, a good tool goes a long way, but you also have to help change people and processes. You have to be able to measure results to be able to really have that organizational wide impact. And so we've expanded upon the core chaos engineering product to be what we call reliability management suite. And there's things like reliability scores, test suites, you know, ways to integrate with alerting and monitoring so that you know the health of your system. And then, of course, underneath all of the tests you run to go uncover issues and fix them before your favorite cloud provider has an outage. Which which never happens, right? <laughs> which which never happens. <laughs> now, I've been following you guys for a while now, and uh, I know, as you mentioned, Gremlin really has become known as the company that's pioneered chaos engineering. What's changed in the you know last few years around how companies approach testing their systems? Yeah, so I think a lot of what we in the industry of reliability and chaos engineering have been learning and doing is moving people off of, hey, that's a cool idea. Hey, that's a neat project. And into this is how our organization does things. I think that's what we saw early days was a lot of pockets within companies of engineers that were passionate or that really felt the pain that wanted to bring it in. But the gap that we saw was people really struggled to make it an organizational wide standard. And, you know, as I mentioned, I think a lot of the things that factor into that is it becomes less about the technology and more about the people. How do you measure it? How do you account for it? Does leadership have visibility into it? Do they feel like if they go make an investment, they get a return on that investment? Yeah. And so, you know, from my perspective, I, I don't normally jump in with both feet into uh, partnership announcements. Uh, you know, everybody has one, but it's my understanding that you guys are announcing an, a partnership this week with Dynatrace while you're at uh, at the KubeCon uh, event. Mm -hmm. And I imagine chaos engineering and observability go together, for lack of a better way to put it, like peanut butter and jelly, in that they make each other better. Can you explain how the partnership works? Yeah, <clears throat> so I agree with you 100%. You know, if you are, you're doing this kind of testing, you need you need visibility into what's happening in the system. You need your control panel, you need to see what's happening. And so that's that's an important part. Otherwise, you're really flying blind and you're not really experimenting and learning and fixing. You're just kind of out there tinkering. Um, the other thing that's been very important to us is the safety aspect. You know, we've designed Gremlin and the way we run our tests that we never want to cause a production incident. We want to be very thoughtful about finding and preventing things with the minimum risk exposed. And monitoring, you know, and Dynatrace in particular is what gives us that ability to really know, is the system healthy? What's fun about this integration is, you know, we've really streamlined. We, you know, we have this capability within Gremlin where you go integrate with your monitoring provider and we set it up and then we can go get those signals. But Dynatrace provides us a lot of great things out of the box so that we don't have to ask the customer a lot of questions. And so if they essentially tell us, hey, here is our service we're monitoring in Dynatrace, we can go find all the relevant metrics. We can go find the relevant alerts that exist and we can pull them into Gremlin. And we use that so that while we're running a test, number one, if things are unhealthy, we want to stop that test. We want to stop it, halt it, clean it up, evaporate the impact and go back to normal because, hey, we found something wrong or something wasn't working the way we expected. The other part of that is we really want to know, did our test pass? And the way to know that we really passed these kind of, you know, full system tests is to measure the health of it. 
You know, can we respond to customers? Did our latency go up? Did our error rate change? And so this allows us to go gather those metrics and at the end of a test, tell the customer, tell the end user, hey, yes, you passed and here's why, or no, you didn't pass and here's why. Now, this week is, uh, it's a big week. It's, you know, KubeCon uh, in Atlanta and it grows as a trade show every year. Can you explore with me the reasons behind the focus on Kubernetes? What is it about this technology uh, from your perspective that garners so much attention from both vendors and users alike? Well, uh, I mean, in, in addition to us being a shop that leverages Kubernetes for how we deploy and operate our software, uh, I think it's just emerged as, uh, you know, one of the most common patterns we see our customers use. So we have a lot of our customer base in Kubernetes, and it's a good and a bad thing. You know, some of the things we built help you test Kubernetes, help you understand what's going on within Kubernetes. Um, but, it, but at its heart, you know, I think the containerized, uh, system that it gives you the ability to swap things out, scale them up, you know, react to failures is just, you know, just what's needed in modern software development to be agile, to develop quickly, but also to respond quickly when an issue arises. Now, now I'm excited about KubeCon. Okay. I'm, I'm there next week. I'm going to be hanging out with the team. I'm getting to, you know, talk to a bunch of folks. Uh, it's funny because I think a few years back, it was a little bit of an up and coming conference. And as you said, you know, it's become it's become one of the go to's. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to see a lot of people that I haven't seen in a while, which uh, is a fun part of it. Yeah, like I said before, it, it grows every year. And, you know, we you, it's one of those shows now, to your point, where every year uh, we're seeing a lot of the you know familiar faces, uh, a lot of new faces. Uh, so, you know, I can't wait either. It, it's. Uh, this this week is going to be crazy. Now, one of the uh, speaking of crazy, one of the other things that everybody is talking about in 2025 and and in 2026, it's there's you know no difference is AI, and I have to imagine that chaos engineering is even more important than ever in the AI era. You know, companies are are moving so quickly, so fast. Many are even shipping code that's not even written by human beings anymore. How do you convince companies to take the time to run chaos engineering tests and make sure their systems are healthy in this environment? Yeah, well, I think you hit on it. It's, you know, if we're going to move at a fast velocity, we need some safety nets in place. And you know what? We, we do unit testing and integration testing because it's a good idea. We typically do performance testing and disaster recovery testing to make sure that when things go wrong, our system behaves correctly. So the way I view it is it's acceptance testing for what the AI agents are writing. And one of the things I've personally observed is, you know, AI is, you know, as good as you tell it to be. It's this classic project management problem where did you specify all the things you really care about? And I think one of the things we're going to learn over the next couple of years is you need to be very explicit about things like reliability and security to make sure they're accounted for. You know, hey, you wrote this piece of code that solved the problem I needed. Did you wrap that dependency network call in a circuit breaker? No. OK, well, I need you to go do that. We know that's a best practice here. Hey, you, you know, you put together a network call. Do you have exponential back off? Hey, you built a service. Are you load shedding if it comes underwater? So I think, you know, it's it's in our interest to be explicit about that. But it's also in the business's interest to you know counteract the risk by balancing it out with a set of you know realistic tests that tell us hey we haven't regressed hey our system is able to handle these types of issues. Yeah, we definitely live uh, in exciting times right now, and uh, you know with with AI and uh, everything else going on. And like I said, it's going to be a wild time at KubeCon. So uh, I look forward to uh, seeing you in person in Atlanta. And uh, before we, I let you go, uh, where can folks go if, if they've watched this video and they want to learn even more about Gremlin and chaos engineering and some of the technology that we talked about today? Where, where should they go? Yeah, well, I mean, first and foremost, if you're at KubeCon, show up and say hi. We'll have a booth, you know, happy to, to shake hands and get to meet people in the real world. That's always nice. Uh, we're a remote company, so it's nice when, we, when we're out meeting people live. 
Uh, obviously, you can come to our website, gremlin.com. You know, we've got a free trial where you can go test out the product, you know, see what we've been up to, see what we've been building. Um, in fact, you know, speaking on AI, you know, we talked about kind of there's some risks of AI, but, you know, it's also an opportunity. And one of the things we've done at Gremlin, our vision has always been, can we help you run the test, know whether it passed and know how to fix it? And AI is helping us get to that last step. Uh, you know, monitoring is very important for the did it work and, you know, helping you get feedback there. But what do I do about it? Well, that's a great place where we've launched something this year called reliability intelligence. And the goal is if you run a test and it doesn't pass, we tell you how to go fix it. You know, and that might be at a high level. You need a circuit breaker or a timeout or at a low level. It might be, hey, you know, here's this exception or here's this bug you need to go address as an issue. Um, so yeah, quite excited to to interact and hear with people wherever or hit me on, you know, X or, or on LinkedIn, come follow us, you know, come throw some comments our way. You could probably guess my email. So you got any dire questions, you know, I'd be happy to hear them. It sounds great. Well, Colton, it's been a pleasure uh, catching up with you today and uh, definitely appreciate you sharing your expertise with us. And like I said, I look forward to seeing you at KubeCon at your booth and uh, anyone who's there, I invite them to do the same. Awesome. Thank you again, David. Lovely All right. time. All right. Take care.